Welcome back to the Archives. Today we will be reviewing the first arc of the series. If you're not familiar with the series already, check out my previous videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get back to the video. The beginning of the series is quite simple to understand. Earl goes down well into olden times, finds cute dog demon, and ends up needing his help with the MacGuffin for the series, the Jewel of Four Souls. Now that we're all caught up, let's get back to the good stuff. Kagome's job from there on out is to protect the jewel. She does this for a solid two episodes before shattering it into a million pieces. Much to Inuyasha's dismay, he and Kagome must team up and search all across feudal Japan to find all the shards and defeat evil along the way. Your next question might be, so what do I need to know? What do I need to see at the bare minimum to get the gist of the story and drop in at any point? At minimum, you probably need to see the first two episodes. These introduce the basic main characters and plot points of the series. You get a general feeling for what you're in for. Today we will be doing just that by going over the first two episodes. A little side note here, season one has no filler episodes at all, so the whole season is jam-packed with details. That's why I'm breaking it down like this, from one major arc to another. So episode one, Kagome goes to feudal era. Episode two, the jewel breaks. These first two episodes are what I would consider a pilot arc, where you're just introduced to the characters and the setting and get an idea of any magic systems that is in place. Episode 3 and 4 are a minor villain episode that I will go over at a later date, and episode 5 through 7 are the first big plot point after the jewel breaking. It starts to introduce new characters as well as character development, but we'll get to that later. If we were to take Naruto, for example, the first five episodes before the Zabaza arc where we are introduced to the members of the ninja school, our main characters, and the introduction of ninja teams. But arguably, the first major arc is the Zabaza arc. Big thing happens, characters change, that sort of thing. This format applies to most major shonen series, as well as to Inuyasha. So for now, we'll just go over the first two episodes and get better acquainted with the characters and story. We are initially introduced to the feudal world at the point of Inuyasha trying to steal the jewel. We, the audience, will not really understand the gravity of this situation until it is pieced together throughout the rest of the series. A priestess, Kikio, wields a bow and has shot an arrow into Inuyasha's heart, pinning him to the tree. From there, Kikio dies in a wildly dramatic fashion and is cremated along with the jewel, taking it with her so no one else can have it. One little pet peeve of mine here is that she doesn't look nearly injured enough to have sustained fatal wounds. So when she falls over dying, it is kind of hard to take seriously now after seeing it so much. Present day Japan, which is really just 1997 Japan, we find Kagome living with her family at a shrine that they reside over. When trying to find her cat with her brother, she gets pulled into a well by a centipede demon lady who keeps saying, You have it, don't you? Give it to me. Obviously, Kagome is freaked out by this, and a little disoriented. She climbs out of the well expecting to see her house when all she sees is a forest. So the well's a magic portal now! She wanders around and finds Inuyasha still pinned to the tree. I can't be sure that it's the same tree because here, look at this. This is the shot of when Kikio shot him with the arrow, and here's him now. Where did the buildings go? Where did the pathways go? Like. Anyway, the villagers find her and bring her to our next character, Lady Kaede, the local priestess. Kaede is the younger sister of Kikio, who passed away 50 years ago. Kaede proceeds to exposition dump on her and will continue to do so for the rest of the series. She's your... how do I put it? Walking encyclopedia who just happens to know all the right info? The sage of the series. Come to find out, Kagome is a reincarnation of her sister Kikio. They look exactly the same, have some weird spiritual stuff going on, the whole shebang. So the centipede lady is back, wrecking havoc like one does. Oh, and we can't forget, she throws a horse. In the manga, she takes a bite out of the horse, and then you see the blood spray when it hits the ground. Kagome steps up and nopes the f*** out of there, heading to the forest, hoping to lead it away from the people. She is such a sweet, naive summer child sometimes. Can we just appreciate the aesthetic of this visual here? It's so appealing to me. The moon, the fields, just... They end up back with Inuyasha and he has awakened. He's been asleep that whole time. Not dead, asleep. Let that sink in there. 
Kikyo didn't kill him. She just left him there to sit in limbo for basically forever. She couldn't have known how long he would have been on that tree. She was just that pissed at him that she said, Nah fam, you stay put and never have peace. Inuyasha immediately thinks Kagome is Kikyo and starts shit-talking her about not being able to handle the centipede lady. While she's distracted, the centipede bites Kagome's side and out pops the jewel. I'm sure Kaede is shocked seeing this because she could have swore that they burned it with Kikio 50 years ago. The centipede lady has been after this the whole time, looking for the jewel. She swallows it and gets gross looking. At least before she had some nice features. Kagome takes the arrow out, Inuyasha is free, and the centipede lady is nothing for him, for he is stronger than her. Now we have our oh shit moment because he starts coming after the villagers for the jewel. The villagers really are never any good at anything, so never expect them to actually do anything like, you know, defending the village. Kaede though, being a priestess, can actually step in and lend some spiritual powers by providing the beginning of many gag jokes. What else comes to Kagome's mind than sit boy? Honestly, it's funnier to me in Japanese for some reason. This basically renders Inuyasha useless, bringing him to the ground every time Kagome says the phrase. So let's stop here and recap. Kagome fell into the well and came to feudal Japan. She is the reincarnation of a priestess and had a sacred jewel within her body. Inuyasha is free and wants the jewel but can't really take it because of the beads. Beads. Bees? Beads. Beads? Got it? I know, it's a lot to take in, and it's just the first episode and a half. During her beginning time in the village after the jewel has emerged, Kagome is just trying to come to terms with the fact that this is now her situation. She's there at least two days by this point. It's clear that Inuyasha does not like her, and the villagers keep praising her like she is Kikio. So why wouldn't now be the time to throw more stuff at her? She goes looking for the well and ends up getting ambushed by bandits. These guys are creeps. With the boss of the gang kind of just swinging blindly, Kagome is actually trying to help these guys. She's sort of looking out for their safety, even though they were about to kill her. She really has a pure heart. Inadvertently, Inuyasha saves her, but only for the jewel, which she threw out the window to try and distract the big guy. The man had been possessed by a demon bird that had eaten out his insides to control him like a puppet. Talk about gross. Inuyasha and Kagome chase after the bird, as it has now taken the jewel and swallowed it, becoming much stronger. A little boy is unfortunately grabbed by the bird, but Kagome is able to shoot its leg off with an arrow dropping the boy to the river. Kagome jumps in and swims to save him while Inuyasha follows the bird. Taking a bow and arrow from a random villager, Kagome shoots the bird with its foot tied to an arrow as it had been regenerating at this point. With this, the leg goes to join its body, causing the famous shattering of the jewel. A bright light and thousands of shard fragments go flying across the land. Kagome and Inuyasha find one jewel shard and begin their quest from there. And thus concludes the pilot arc of Inuyasha. We are introduced to our two main characters, the overarching plot happens, and our journey begins. Now what I'm thinking about covering from here is major arcs throughout the series in different episodes, as well as doing character-focused episodes. You might be asking, but what about the villains? Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about them. I'll be putting out a Monsters of the Week episode in the future to cover all the minor villains within a season. Bigger villains will be getting an episode all of their own. So make sure you tune in for more videos in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time you visit the archives.